Hello, everybody. Oh, how about that, Zach? A little, a little round of applause. Welcome to the PHLY Eagles podcast, the first show for PHLY. Zach Berman, Bo Wolf. What are you doing? I mean, it's weird. I can like, I can touch you. This is weird. It's like I did too close there. Yeah, I mean, how you doing? Look at this beautiful this is impressive. set that we have, this beautiful studio. I haven't seen you since yesterday. What's going on? I'm seeing a lot of us now, right? Uh, no, what are we is, doing here? This is great. I'm so used to seeing you on the other end of the screen during the podcast. For now, sitting next to you here in a studio, we have the skyline. Hashtag that we're Zach's looking at. legs we get to see now. <laughs> uh, so this is, this is awesome, and I'm, ex I'm excited uh, to build this with you. So tell me a little bit, what, I mean, what's going on here? What, what, what is this? What's going on? <laughs> what are you doing here? What can we expect? You can expect top Eagles coverage. Uh, the PHLY Eagles podcast. Uh, we'll be doing it five days a week, year round, in studio. Five days a week? That feels like. Are you going to be able to handle me for five days a week? We'll see. All year long. We'll see. Looking forward to that. It's like a social experiment. I think. <laughs> Pre game, post game. Uh, I I will there. I'll I'll be there every day. I'll, I'll I'll be at the team facility. I'll be at every game. So you'll still be getting the same level of reporting that I've been I've been providing for the past decade, and I uh, will be doing it here in the studio every day as well. Uh, shout out to the sickos. We gotta gotta give them a little bit of a mention. Uh, I think I think they can appreciate that. P H L Y is a is a bird pun in itself, um, and I, I think we're ready to go. Let's do it. We got a lot to do, so uh, let's just sort of set the stage for for what everybody can expect from uh, the channel for the day. We've got our show right now, obviously. We've got the Philly show at twelve thirty, the Flyers show at three thirty, the Union show at five, and then Philly's pregame uh, and postgame today. Uh, we've got the P H L Y Eagles podcast this week. Today at 11, obviously, you're watching live. 2.30 uh, tomorrow, pre- and post-game on Thursday, and 11.30 on Friday. It's the, the, we're in a weird part of the schedule here, Zach. Like, yeah. the Eagles season is not really, uh, you know, we've got a, a Thursday Thir game. We've got a Monday, Monday game. game. So yeah. we're going to get into our, uh, our usual rotation at some point. But for now, we're sort of flying by the seat of our pants. Well, that's part or of having PHL a PHL lying by the seat of our pants. <laughs> there you go. That's that's part of having a, a good team is you don't have the conventional Sunday at one o'clock game. So there are not many of those on the schedule. So we'll get used to these prime time games. We'll get used to uh, these these pre and post at at night at odd hours. Uh, it's gonna be fun. How has this How has this day been for you? I feel like a lot of uh, a lot of phone buzzing. I imagine. Yeah, a fair amount, which is great, right? Take there's, a little flex, take a whiff here. I mean, <laughs> no, there's excitement. There's a, there's a, there's excitement in the city, excitement in the market, and 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 we'll answer those calls. What's the uh, who's like the weirdest person you heard from today? <laughs> the weirdest or the person. most famous? The most famous? Well, Bo Wolf would be the most famous, oh, okay. right? Uh, Jeffrey? <laughs> uh, no, Bo Wolf uh, getting a, a text from you or. Early this this morning would 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 be the one that jumps but out. Not I like, was surprised you not were as up early as yeah. You I'm up. usually the one up at you know five forty five. Well, right now I'm on like solo parent duty. Okay. Uh, Rachel's out uh, out of town for work, so you know you know Jane is an early riser. So I'm letting you know that uh, yeah, Jane and me are alike in that regard. Yep. And I think that's probably the only way that you are alike. <laughs> the only way that's fair. That's um, fair. Okay. Well, we've got a lot to get to. Uh, there's a lot of Eagles news that we need to talk about. Obviously, a short turnaround before the Thursday game. Um, but before we do that, let's, let's have a little word from our sponsor, Zach. Uh, football is back. It's in full swing with another week of epic games, and who's got you covered on the action for every single one of them? That's right. It's DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet $5 on football and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Nobody's missing out on the action this season. All DraftKings customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. Get in on the NFL Week 2 action with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code PHLY to sign up. 
new customers can bet just $5 and take home 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code PHLY. The crown is yours. Zach, I know you're excited that now you can officially gamble uh, on the <laughs> NFL. And here's the disclaimer. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort. 21 and over varies by jurisdiction. Void in ONT. See sportsbook.com. DraftKings.com slash football terms for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. All right, Zach, I have a very important question for you. You We're in a new space. This is a bit of a new dynamic. Does the Stone Cold Newsman exist? (laughs) Is he still here? Absolutely. All right, well. When there's news to share... I am here. Well, the Eagles have plenty of news, so I think with that in mind, we should, we should send it over to, like, a foot to my right, the Stone Cold Newsman, Zach Berman. N'Kobe Dean is out multiple weeks. The Eagles linebacker, N'Kobe Dean, suffered a foot injury. He will miss some time. The Eagles only have two linebackers on the active roster, Christian Ellis, uh, is the next one up, along with Zach Cunningham. They also have Nicholas Morrow on the practice squad, who they can elevate. Uh, the Eagles had a injury report yesterday because of the Thursday game. The most notable injury status for this week is James Bradbury. He's in the concussion protocol, and that's noteworthy, too, because when you suffer a concussion on a Sunday and there's a Thursday game, because of the requirements that it takes to pass that league-mandated concussion protocol, it's hard to get cleared for that Thursday game. Also, Reed Blankenship dealing with a rib injury. Fletcher Cox dealing with a rib injury as well. And then, and then Kenny Gainwell also has a rib injury. So rib injuries are going around. Uh, back to you in the studio, Bo. You like ribs? I do. Yeah? yeah. You make ribs or you're more of like a purchaser no. of ribs? No, more of at a restaurant. I, I, I have a... I haven't put ribs on the grill yet. I, this is not, these are not the best ribs I've ever had, but when, for whatever reason, when I think of ribs, my, my nice ribs memory is from medieval times. You are so into medieval <laughs> I do times. Love medieval times. Your medieval times references. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's, let's talk about these injuries. Uh, obviously, N'Kobe Dean is the big one. Nick Sirianni mm-hmm. talked about it yesterday. Sounds like he's going to be out for several weeks. Most likely, he was uh, in a walking boot, as reporters saw after the game. Um, They don't have a lot there by design. This is always going to be where uh, the Eagles, by design, Howie Roseman goes light. I think it's probably the right thing to do. However, we saw it just in week one. Now, the defense was not the problem in that game, but the defense was picked apart in the middle of the field. Uh, Zach Cunningham, I thought, was was a bit of an issue in that game. You know, I love Christian Ellis. I think he's ready for prime time. But uh, with no N'Kobe Dean, Mm -hmm. what is your expectation of, of what we're going to see there moving forward? Well, in the short term, Christian Ellis, uh, like you said, because they simply don't have the numbers. Although I can see Nicholas Morrow factoring into it because of his veteran experience. But this is a, a, this, I don't want to say a dire situation. It's certainly a problematic situation for the Eagles. Uh, they were undermanned as it was going into the season at linebacker, carrying only three on the roster. We identified this in training camp as a position that, could be a potential weakness for them. Uh, and, and I think they were relatively spoiled last year with the production of TJ Edwards and Kaiser White to a degree. That's kind of the exception. That's, that's not what we've typically seen from Well, I mean, from like, literally, Kaiser White is the exception given every other veteran yes, linebacker they signed true. in the previous four years. That's a good point. Uh, so they were hoping that Kobe Dean would take that step into the top linebacker this season. The injury certainly sets him back there. Zach Cunningham looked good this summer in training camp. In that week one game, he was, uh, he was picked it's on. Tough. And this is what teams are going to do. They're, they're going to pick on the middle of the field. So you mentioned it. The way the Eagles are constructed, it's the pass rush and the corners. And they hope they get by at linebacker, and they hope they get by at cornerback. And uh, I'm, I'm sorry, and they, and they hope they get by at, at, at safety, rather. And uh, I think that they're vulnerable at both those spots right now. It was interesting because uh, part of the reason that I was so surprised that they played you know, so much heavy uh, straight nickel, 5-2, mm-hmm. in that game was because 
just from a like get your best players on the field standpoint, it would it would feel like the penny with five one five. You know, you get three defensive tackles and two edge rushers on the field. Sort of makes more sense. I don't know what that was like in terms of just responding to the Patriots personnel on offense. I guess we'll we'll find out if they change anything on Thursday. But you know, like the, the Nicobe Dean thing. Nicobe, I thought looked good in that game until he got hurt. Yeah, but it's just like. This is the gamble that they made, mm-hmm. and it's part of why it might have been nice to see him on the field last year because, like, the scouting report on him, the reason that teams were a little bit skittish about drafting him, this guy who was thought of as a late first-round potential second-round pick, the reason he fell to the third round is because he's a little bit slight, mm-hmm. and you worry about him being able to hold up physically. And the first year that he's the guy, the signal caller, he gets hurt in training camp. they got to sign two guys, of course, the... Dominic and Sue, uh, Linville Joseph <laughs> parallel. And yep. then in week one, he doesn't even make it through the first game. So yeah, that is like, concerning. I think you got to be a little bit worried. And I know that it's not the position that they care about, but for a team with like as expectations as high as theirs are, like, I, I think it's sort of like getting late early in terms of like, they got to do something here. Well, and, and that's where the short week doesn't help. Right. You know, I, I know that the reports came out of signing Rashawn Evans to the practice squad. And he's someone who has, starting experience, but there's a reason why he's on the street, you know, on September 11th, September 12th, right? So that, that I don't think is a realistic option for Thursday night against Minnesota. I think this is one where you grin and bear it, but you also have to be thinking in this term, when, when you're the Eagles, you want to know what this team looks like in January. You want to know what this team looks like in February. They are a legitimate Super Bowl contender and you're building the roster for that point in the season. So I'm curious to see what they can do. You know, Howie Roseman is always aggressive. Uh, what keeps him up at night is the idea that someone's available and he doesn't know about it. Uh, so I imagine he's scanning every option, and this is what their pro scouting staff does this time of year. But it's hard to find outside reinforcements once the season begins. And especially you're, you're not really operating from a position of leverage either. So I, I don't quite know what they can do other than Really hope that their pass rush gets home and that Christian Ellis develops and Nicobe Dean gets back. I also have always been of the opinion that like at that position specifically, mm-hmm. it's a real gamble to add somebody midseason because you know, linebacker and safety, where it is all about your your quick reactions and seeing mm-hmm. the game, to have to think about a new scheme in the middle of a season, I think is really difficult. And so um, you know, you think about guys who might have experience in this scheme. It's not great. Like the guy, the, you know, Sean Desai had one season as the coordinator for the Chicago Bears. It was Roquan, Roquan Smith. They're not mm-hmm. trading for him. And it was Alec Ogletree and, you know, Garbanzo Beans. So uh, so, w- so we're going to talk, we'll, we'll yeah. get to some yeah. Woodpecker you yeah. rathers on, uh, on some trade options. But I do think that the way that the schedule is set up, having this Thursday game and then a long layoff until the Monday night game in week three, it does sort of set up for... Like, let's get through this week, and then mm. maybe we can revisit some things. I think it's safety. That might be you flip the switch to Sidney Brown. I think that's possible. And that linebacker, like, I, I, they don't really have a lot of options. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Nicholas Morrow is playing over Zach Cunningham in week three. Um, if I, Zach yeah. Cunningham plays like he did in week one. Yeah, I was about to ask you about that. What's your view on Nicholas Morrow right now? Because going into camp, they sign him with the well they signed him in the spring with the hope that he can be a starting safety not significant guaranteed money there really very very modest money so it's a lottery ticket uh but he was a first team linebacker early in camp did not win the job the eagles decided pretty early on in camp to go to go out and get cunningham to go out and get miles jack did not make the 53 they quickly signed him to the practice squad do you think he can be a realistic option here just as a a get by player if you will I think so, and I think that they have Zach Cunningham, they have Nicholas Morrow, and now Rashad Evans in the building. I think there's a good chance we're going to see every single one of these guys cycled through, and it's like you know, um, veteran running back roulette where you just mm. sort of hope that one guy pops. Right now, like you know, it's like they signed Miles Jack and, and Zach Cunningham. One guy didn't have it and retired. They yep. kept Zach Cunningham. I think it's gonna we're going to see this. It's sort of like a like a, a battle royal. Uh, everybody's going to get a shot, is my guess. Um, I do think that Christian Ellis has the highest your boy, upside. Your you know boy, Christian Ellis. Yes. I think he has the, the uh, best combination of youth, like physical ability, mm-hmm. size, and want to. Um, 
you know, he, he missed a, a couple tackles on Sunday against the Patriots, but I think he was in the right position more than, more than Zach Cunningham was, and I, I do think that he can be good. So let me push back on you here, okay? Because I, I know you have you this. You can Christ- physically push back on me. We are <laughs> this close. Uh, I know you have this Christian Ellis love. The job was wide open. I for have him to always, win. always been a devout yeah. Christian. <laughs> the, the job was, was wide open for him to win this summer. Why didn't he win it? Uh, I don't know that he didn't win it. I, I oh, think you that think the deck was stacked against him. No, but I think that if you're keeping three guys, who's more likely to accept the an initial backup role? I think it's Christian Ellis. Like, is Zach Cunningham really going to be pumped about coming here and he has he's a backup week one? Mm-hmm. I think you could see sort of a like a Zach Brown, Eric Wilson, ah, okay. uh, LJ Fort thing going on here, okay. where the yeah. veteran gets the shot early, loses the job, and is out of town, and yeah. then. Christian Ellis becomes your, maybe he becomes Alex Singleton, maybe he becomes C.J. Edwards. The illustrious list of Eagles veteran free agent linebackers that you just rattled off there. It is funny that like... uh, Which one was the least inspiring for you? I mean, does Jatavis Brown count? (laughs) No, he he doesn't because he literally did not practice with him. He signed and retired. Least inspiring Uh, in what sense? Like, which is the one that when you say, man, this is the one where the hopes were highest and they just, it was complete miss i think it's probably eric wilson that's what uh, I would say. you were high on eric i was wilson. high on eric you wilson. loved eric wilson. yes oh yeah i was so i was the, i was writing the he's the guy sweats <laughs> and javon hargraves that you've had let's make sure that eric wilson is on the ledger as well you know what though i'll take that record if i called josh sweat and i called javon hargrave fine i'll take yeah, but the, all you're doing is just L. calling the top guys the, no i'm calling the emerging guys i'm calling you know you know you're so busy watching javon hargrave signed like a huge contract he just, he's not people were down on him after, after year one I'm, I'm sitting there in that 2021 training camp and i'm saying you know what bo when the eagles james go to bradbury, charlotte that's another one yeah. james bradbury there's another Guy one signed for 10 million dollars what a call hey man i know how to pick them right um i would say i would say eric wilson too uh i got a good wolf send out of zach brown uh, the Zach Brown mm. Band, talking about uh, assless chaps, I believe was in there. Okay, so uh, he you was a Zach Brown Band fan, not particularly. I like the initials. Of course, you don't do. know the music. Like yeah. the initials, yeah. Who would be in the Zach Berman Band? <laughs> Are any of the Berman brothers for for you know new listeners, new watchers? Zach has, I believe, eleven <laughs> brothers. I have four brothers and a sister. Uh, yeah. Who's the most musically inclined of the Berman clan? The most musically inclined? I, I don't think any of us are. Nobody. Uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> Did you ever take like music lessons, instrument lessons? When it was a require or a, a semi requirement back early in, okay. you in play? elementary school. Uh, there was like the Don't give me like the recorder. Give me something. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the recorder yeah. actually. Uh, yeah, yeah, the recorder. I, I I took piano lessons at one point, but uh, I imagine like uh, se- second grade Zach Berman is told that he's got recorder lessons and he shows up with his voice recorder ready to <laughs> interview the teacher. I would have loved that, right? Yeah, that, yeah I, I can use a voice recorder better than I can use a, yeah, a recorder. I mean, it doesn't take a lot of skill to use a voice recorder. It's a one button deal. True, but transcribing, you have to, the transcribing ability is, is uh, that's important. Okay. Um, in terms of the schedule for the Eagles this week, um, mm. short week, what does that mean? So short week is is uh, <laughs> the Thursday game. It's a it's a it's it's a quick turnaround. They they really don't practice. Uh, and I pause there because last year, if you remember, we were both in the locker room preceding the Thursday night game mm-hmm. in Houston, and they literally had stationary bikes set up um, right after the game for them to start. It was like getting. a choose your own adventure. There were stationary bikes. There it's, were the yes. um, like the the heated th- mm-hmm. like. Uh, body wrap things that you could go into. There was the cold tub, and there was one other thing I forget. But yeah, which oh, one would like, you have chosen? There was a massage table. Yes. Which one would you have chosen? Probably the massage table, but not ah, in a yeah. uh, not a Robert Kraft type of way. <laughs> uh, so, so they they did not have that on the road this week. You know, they had to board the plane back. But yesterday morning, when they had their their team lift, it was it was focused on kind of detoxing and getting the body right for the quick turnaround. Uh, the Eagles will have a walkthrough today at 2.15. So they, so they won't actually practice. They'll just have a, a walkthrough. Now, their, their walkthroughs are quicker paced. They're, they're, it's not a literal walkthrough. It's more of a run-through. But it's, it's not as if they're, they're, they're going to they're do anything that they would typically do. 
uh, and, and then similar tomorrow, and then the game Thursday night. Now, when you have these games, you don't have, have practices. There's not a lot of game planning, and you kind of stick to your basics. I, I mean, Doug Peterson used to joke that his wife, because, because Doug was so good on Thursday games, and his, his wife would say, you always have these great game plans when you don't have to prepare. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe you shouldn't prepare as, as, as much as you do. And, and the point there is you go back to kind of the basic plays. That's, that's the cliche that you hear from, from coaches. You go to your training camp staples. Now, what's interesting here is how early yeah. this Thursday night game is because I imagine the Eagles were able to do some, some prep in the past few weeks. You only have one uh, Vikings film from this year to watch of, of Brian Flores' defense. Uh, you can look at last year to get a sense of the offense. It was pretty early on, but you still saw Kirk Cousins, still saw Justin Jefferson. And Melvin. <laughs> you're, you're, yeah, you want to explain that? I can't, can't, I can't beat the Bucks at home. <laughs> I'm really a good quarterback, though. Watch my documentary. Yeah, yeah our, our new listeners will see that, that Bo's Kirk Cousins voice is the <laughs> same as every other quarterback that he makes fun of voice. Yeah, that's about yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, or a person generally, or or yeah. person. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so no, no. I I I look at it and and say this is where it helps when you have a talented roster uh, because you you kind of lean on your bread and butter plays on these Thursday night. Nick Sirianni's happy that they're home, and actually, veterans like Jason Kelsey says that, that he actually likes the Thursday game because you know even though you don't have a lot of time to recover, you get the full weekend thereafter. Right, so you get the and extra time. you don't time. have to practice. Yeah, it's um, the mini buy. But, like you said, it's a little bit different that it comes so early. Um, I think it's it's a little bit less of an advantage. I do wonder how much of the, uh, like the sort of uninspiring week one game plan on offense, and we'll spend a little more time talking about the offense tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I wonder how much of that was, a little bit altered by you know, wanting to not show too much and having the quick turnaround before Thursday. You think that factored into it? I don't know. Ooh. I wonder. I don't know. The look ahead, right? A little bit. I could see that. You know, it's funny because I was I was doing some prep on the Thursday night game last week, and the guys were very much like, "Oh, we don't, you know, we're we're focused on Sunday." Well, sure, but, but the coaching the coaches aren't going to tell the players that. No, but that you know, you you do have your quality control coaches and and, and different coaches on on staff as advanced prep for the for those situations. All right, uh, Zach, you want to tell us about uh, Foco? Do you? Oh, Let I can do it. Up. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Foco, Zach, is a leading manufacturer of sports and entertainment merchandise with a product line that includes apparel, accessories, toys, collectibles, novelty items, and more. It is the best officially licensed gear for all sports and fandoms. It's football and tailgating season. Overalls, hoodies, hats, sunglasses, bags, everything you need for a game. Foco has hooked PHLY up and provided awesome pieces for our sets. Foco always has our back for Philly sports, and they have yours, too. Get the best gear around by using the link in our description. For all non-presale items, use the promo code PHLY for 10% off. All right, Zach. I appreciate you taking that for me. I'll I'll pick up the next one for you. I got your back. (laughs) Thank you. I I, Um, I didn't have it in front of me at that time. Let's continue talking about the linebackers, but in a familiar way. Let's do some woodpecker you rathers. Ah, okay. Okay. I like this. Uh, let's start generally speaking. Woodpecker you rather stick with what the Eagles have at linebacker. Okay. You make no other moves other than cycling through these these veteran guys. You wait for Nicobe Dean to come back. Or would you trade, and I think you're gonna like this one because just knowing you, <laughs> would you trade, let's call it a fourth round pick to the Tampa Bay Bucks for the last year of his rookie deal, Devin White. Hmm. Fourth round pick for Devin White last year of rookie deal. Yes. Uh, now, I did not watch that, that, that game, which I should have because I, I, I will as, as we're doing prep. We for will. This it's been a bit of a whirlwind, yeah. Zach. You know, uh, <laughs> These past... we flew in yesterday from yep. New England and boy, are our arms tired. <laughs> and, and we came, uh, we we came, came here, right here to the launch studio. a brand new site. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was great. And got home, wrote a story on Jason Kelsey. You can check that out now on allphly.com. Uh, About, uh, you know, being comfortable in, un- in uncomfortable situations. Yes, exactly. About the expectations that come with Philadelphia, how to, how to deal with them, how to tune them out, uh, and, and then how sometimes and a, a, a healthy dose of— What a robust of, media market it is. 
Yes, and it, it's more robust today. Uh, and then I know that's right. And then further, you know, he was saying too that a healthy dose of anxiety can be a good thing, right? Like when when you're a little comfortable, that's 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 not necessarily good. He 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 talked about how sometimes you know Jeff Stoutland will will come in and and kind of scream at the guys when he thinks you know they're 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 getting a, a little too complacent right. there. So and in yeah. your experience. You know, how much anxiety is unhealthy? <laughs> um, <laughs> how much? Uh, yeah, 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 there is a line there where, where you can certainly cross, but... What's your sleep situation these days on your, uh, you know, on your app? Uh, my aura ring? Yeah. Um, yeah uh, no, I haven't slept a lot, but that's the season. That's the nature You're of the excited. season. Yeah, excited. The off season, you, you try to catch up on, on sleep a little bit more. Um, but I don't believe that for you. You don't believe that for me? No. Oh. Um, You've been working on a book all off season. I don't, when, when were you that sleeping? That's true. You sound like my wife now. That's what she's asking, right? Um, but uh, gratefully, we don't look alike. <laughs> yeah, that is a good thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, so, so he, I, I, I agree with what he said, though, in terms of like uh, comfort is, you know, that I, I, you need to leave your comfort zone. Um, and, 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 and that's something that he, he talked about there being uncomfortable. Um, Shout out but to, uh, I see cousin Grace in the chat. Mm -hmm. Uh, we see some of the old sickos in there. I see Claire. So, uh, happy yeah. to see some old faces. Yeah, this Names, is great. I guess. Um, but, uh, Devin White. For so, a fourth so, round pick. so Devin White for fourth round pick, I would, you know, still, still young, high level player, uh, been, been productive. He's a, he's a, a plug and play guy. I don't get into, you know, there's always this, uh, Ever since the Golden Tate trade, you hear, well, you acquire the guy midseason, you're going to get the comp pick when he signs elsewhere. Yeah, I hate that. I don't buy that. You know, that's, that's not why you do it. But I think that the expected value that you would get from a player like Devin White um, probably trumps what you would get with a fourth-round pick. I don't know. I, I think I the know, book on Devin White is that he's been pretty uninspiring. Uh, okay. You know, that's, that's still Levante David's middle of the field. Mm. Um, I think a fourth is a little bit heavy for a guy who would have to come in, can you know, mid-season adjust to the defense. I don't know. I feel like I would pass on that. Okay. Yeah. I Maybe mean, a fifth or sixth. I I don't have strong conviction on it. I I do think though that that they need help at linebacker, and I'm curious to see the well, other I've got options. Some more options here. Yeah. Fine. So I uh, let, let's just this is. The, Let's let's set this up for our, our listeners and viewers. I said to Bo before the show, I said, Do you want to give me these names ahead of time? Right? And it's 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 You no. said no. Yeah, so this is kind of impromptu. This is like if I'm Howie Roseman and Jason Light calls him or whoever the other GMs that you'll have call him and, and say, What do you think of so and so? Now he doesn't have to answer on the spot. He'll go to his pro scouting staff. So and so but, is trash, they say. And then they say, well, but I'll I'll give you a seventh. Yeah. Say no way. So and so is at worst at least a fourth. It's worth at least a fourth. You gotta you negotiate up, and negotiate down. Yeah, I mean the Eagles aren't operating from a position of leverage here, but we'll see. Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right, I feel like I feel like Patrick Queen is the guy who everybody talks about. Um, I like a Patrick Queen. That the, doesn't surprise me. You know, I mean, <laughs> all of these guys are first round. Of course, you like the first round. I, I like players with you pedigree. Are, you are like uh, weighted to that. You, Always, you know, if they if, if they had just traded for Isaiah Simmons during the summer, yeah, they'd be no better off than they are today. <laughs> they would have, yeah. <laughs> they would still have somebody who can't play either linebacker or safety. Um, Patrick Queen, would you would Pecker you rather trade a fourth round pick for Patrick Queen, or trade Keely Ringo for him straight up? Ravens dealing yeah. with some issues in the secondary. Yeah, I, I'm. I wouldn't trade Keely Ringo for him straight up right now. But he was a fourth round pick. I recognize that. I, I like the developmental upside of Keely Ringo. Well, the idea is that you now have more developmental depth there. Eli Ricks made the team. Mm. Josh Job is coming on. Mario Goodrich made the team. Can I uh, impersonate Howie here? You can never have enough corners. Well, I agree with that. But now, he'll, he'll tell you you can't have enough linebackers, but you can never have enough corners. Yeah. Uh, so, no, I, I wouldn't do Ringo. Uh, now, just this, to this say fourth the round Eagles, pick. Just to say quickly, the Eagles next year's draft uh coffer they have yes. two seconds and no third two seconds and no third because they traded the third for for ringo. keely ringo yeah yes um you know what uh, i would probably try yeah, i i know i i answered yes for devin white 
I still don't love the idea now that I'm thinking about it, trading a fourth rounder for an expiring contract. Um, I, I Especially would, at a position they don't value. I don't it, think they would do that. Exactly. Like I, I, I think back to the Tim Jernigan trade in 2017. You swapped third round picks there. You got a full season of a defensive tackle who was a starting caliber player. Um, I think the Eagles saw last year with the Robert Quinn deal. You know, and, and they haven't had as much success trade, you know, Jannard Avery, he wasn't an expiring contract, but that, the, 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 the fourth what round, an impact he made. yeah, the, the fourth round pick trade, I guess I would need to be a little more convinced on, on the player. I like queen. I don't know if I would give up a fourth round for him and I'd probably change my Devin white answer too. Uh, you see, I, I was operating with the, I was operating from the position that you need help. You're a Super Bowl contender. And frankly, that's probably what the other general managers are, are, are thinking too, right? Like, Howie, you, you have this team that's ready to play in February. That's the thing. What about linebacker? And Howie will probably say, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. Do you think that he maybe expected to be able to pull off a C.J. Garner-Johnson level trade mm -hmm. this year and that's why linebacker was so light? Or do you think maybe... They were hoping for that to come along, and then the you know Zach Cunningham, Miles Jack signings yeah. were their replacement for that. Yeah, I would probably lean more toward the latter, the Zach Cunningham, Miles Jack thing, because you you can't count on a C.J. Gardner Johnson talent becoming available right before the draft. Or, 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 or I'm sorry, right before the season. Um, I think there was a wait and see approach here, right? They were going to see how Nicobe looked. They were going to see how Nicholas Morrow looked. They were going to see how your boy Christian Ellis looked. Um, but they look, they're, they're getting what they're paying for at linebacker. And I, I know the Nicobe Dean injury is unfortunate, but this is the depth chart they went into it with. Right. So they understood that, that they are bare there and they, and that they would have to get by if something like this occurred. Uh, I think there are moves to be made, but that fourth round price does seem steep now that we talk about it. And I think it probably would end up being a little bit less if, yeah. I think there's probably a, a higher likelihood of if it's an early season trade, it's going to be a player for player trade mm. as opposed to a pick. I don't teams aren't going to just give up right away. I'm trying to think the last linebacker they acquired at this point. Well, like once the season was was kind of getting going, and I'm was thinking it, was there Duke one after Riley, Will Witherspoon. Oh, Duke Riley, Duke, Duke one Riley. of the best <laughs> trades how he's ever made. He Dude. got he got he's the one who got extra picks <laughs> yes. in the Duke Riley trade for uh, for a Cyprian. Jonathan, Jonathan Cyprian, Cyprian yeah. yeah. What a steal. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't all the way make up for the Casey yeah. Tuhill disaster in the Kerry <laughs> Vincent trade, but... Are we the official podcast now of, of the esoteric trades? I feel like we've always been. Always been, okay. Yeah. We'll claim that mantle. Um, yeah, I think it was Duke Riley. No, I mean, he was a special teams player. He wasn't playing on defense. I'm trying to think if they... He was played on defense in 2020? Well, how'd that go? Not, not particularly well for anybody <laughs> that year. Okay. Uh... It was good, good, good pandemic joke. <laughs> that, that actually wasn't. <laughs> that wasn't a pandemic joke, but that that is applicable. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Okay, another option here for you. Woodpecker, you rather <laughs> trade? I know we're doing the fourth here. Let's let's okay. call the fifth for Jeremy Chin. Oh man, your now boy, you're speaking my language. Uh, who could maybe play a little linebacker uh, yeah. if you wanted him to, or would you trade a fourth? Let's call it a fourth and a fifth for Kevin Byard. We're talking safety now. Well, Kevin Byard is a Philly guy. Uh, right? you no, know it is. Ticket after my heart. Um, so, uh, no, I, I, I would probably prefer Jeremy Chin. Do you Chin. think you could name a Philly guy on every roster in the NFL? Uh, well, right now, the, you know, we're, we're under the lights. Yeah. Um, I would have to think hard about it. But, yeah. Is I, there a Philly I, guy on the Lions who comes to mind? Well, they... they Traded DeAndre Swift. Uh, Craig uh, Reynolds is a South Jersey guy, I believe. Okay. Can we give you that? Let me I fact mean, that's check an unbelievable that. Unbelievable pull. Let me that's... fact check that real quick here. Uh, Whether that's true or not, if you made it up on the spot, I'm giving you credit. Craig Reynolds is. Uh, well, he's from Willow Grove, so he is. He is a. He is a Philly guy. Wait, is it? Uh, is it Craig and, Reynolds and or is to, it Reynolds? Craig. He, so he went to Abington High, or he's he's from. He went to Abington High School. He's from Cutstown. So uh, yeah, he it's. It's Craig Reynolds. Unbelievable and DraftKings hit for somebody who bet on Craig Reynolds coming up on the very first episode of the PHLY Eagles podcast. Nice plug there. That's, a, that's an organic plug. I like that. Mm. Yeah. Just like that hair of yours. 
<laughs> no plug. You got beautiful, or you know, I, homegrown I, lettuce. Nothing, yeah, organic, no, nothing plugged about that. I appreciate you saying. All that. right, Shin or Bayard? Who would you rather? Who would you Shin, rather? Shin, younger, uh, more upside. You can re-sign him. Can be a core player here at a at an important, uh, you know, at a position where you you lack kind of the, the long term answers. Feels Jeremy like the shine has come off of him a little bit, though. Like, if the Panthers are willing to get rid yeah. of him, then how, how well, much of a core player could he be? Yeah, different defense. Um, but uh, Jeremy Chin has a, a very, um, I don't know if special is the word, but interesting spot in Eagles history because that's right. Jeremy Chin was the player the Eagles would have taken had they not taken Jalen Hurts in the second round in 2020. So, or 2020. Do you think they made the right decision? Well, yeah, clearly best pick in best pick in Howie's history, and I'll take the L there. Best uh, pick in Howie's history. I'm trying to think. Best pick in Howie's history. Get a franchise quarterback in the second round. Well, I mean, my lot in the seventh well, round's up there. Yeah, but what about Moses Foku? <laughs> what about Moses Foku? <laughs> seventh round pick turned out to be a starting yeah. linebacker. That's pretty good. Jason Kelsey. Jason Kelsey. I mean, if you're talking about actual value, like the Kelsey Mylana ones come up, but I, I actually. Yeah. When we have this discussion, as I've said before, I think, it's, I think it's more impressive to make an early round pick that's a little bit more debatable when you were actually right because yeah. like Kelsey and my lot of those are just lottery tickets. If you thought they would be that good, you would have taken yeah. them much earlier. It's like Tom Brady pick 199 and check that one off the uh, bingo card, the Tom Brady reference. Mm. Yeah. yeah. He and Bobby Kraft going orchids of Asia <laughs> together. Um, all right, I got one more for you. Yep. Would you rather trade Kenny Gainwell into sixth round pick to the Indianapolis Colts, who you know could use a running back, Shane Steichen knows Kenny Gainwell, for Jason Kelsey's friend, Philly guy, Zaire Franklin. Or would you rather trade Marcus Mariota to the New York Jets for C.J. Mosley? Now, they've uh, got Quincy Williams sort mm-hmm. of taken over in the middle of that defense. Maybe they don't need Played Mosley well so night. much. They need a quarterback. We know that. Uh, you know, Zach Wilson... I don't Wait. know how much you watched the game last night, yeah. but he stinks. Uh, Your boy. <laughs> completely trashy to Jones. Uh, do, would they want a Mariota? Which one, which one appeals to you more? So, uh, the, I'm, I'm giving up Kenny Gainwell and a draft pick to get Zaire Franklin. I think Zaire Franklin's pretty good. Now, Zaire Franklin checks off two boxes for me. Philly guy and... And a Z. Well, three boxes. And you know where he was Franklin, educated? Ben Franklin. You know where he was educated? Uh, America. <laughs> Syracuse University. Oh, that's right. Look at that. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm not giving up Gainwell and a pick for Franklin. Okay. I mean, two, yeah. two like, uh, yeah, it's, it's devalued Chris, positions. Is like, Chris Boward writing these? Uh, <laughs> is he writing your material now? <laughs> Come on. Um, uh, no, uh, I, would, I would trade Mariota for CJ Mosley, for sure. Um, what do you think the Jets are going to do? I mean, they spent the number two overall pick on Zach Wilson. But he stinks. Their defense is like Super Bowl caliber. Yeah, I mean, poor Garrett Wilson, man. He was ready for... What a, what a hell yeah. of a catch that was. Um, I don't know what they would do. Now, there's... You know, I, I know that... Uh, I actually got a text. I hope I'm allowed to say this from our, our, our colleague, Jamie Lynch, last night. Who uh, he, 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 he Yeah, he brought up the Wentz thing, because I, I, I know that's been going mm. around. Um, no, nah, I, I, I don't think... Joe Wentz, Douglas... Joe Douglas, that's true. Um, Nick Foles is on the street. He's available. Uh, but, no, my guess is they go with Wilson. The one name I, I saw this morning, and I, I would like to credit who I saw it, it was on, it was on Twitter, and, uh, was Philip Rivers. And mm. if, he, if, if he's someone you call out of retirement. Joe Flacco uh, has been with the Jets the past two years. He Joe was the Flacco. last veteran quarterback they traded for. Remember that? Yeah, where were you when the Joe Flacco trade went down? I can tell you exactly where I was. I don't which, know. Which, which probably, I, I don't even know if, if Joe Flacco could tell you where he was when the Joe Flacco trade went down. Yeah. I was in Vegas. Uh, the Eagles had just played the Raiders. Actually, it was like the low point of that 2021 season. Yeah, of course. And Fletcher Cox calls out Jonathan Gannon yeah, in the postgame press conference. Had a late flight that night. Oh yeah, you had the late Monday flight. You spent the whole day, uh, a whole a whole day in Vegas, gambling gambling yeah. away. Wasn't gambling away. I was I was writing a story and at the tables. Uh, no, nah, because I I didn't do particularly well uh, uh, at that trip. You had a limit. So and you stuck to it. You got a yeah, responsible. Exactly. You don't reach back in your pocket. Yeah. You love Vegas. Yeah, of course I love Vegas. Yes. What's of course? Great food, good weather. Um, it's like mall yeah. food. 
Mall food. Yeah. <laughs> you can get anything you want in Vegas. You can get anything you want in Philadelphia. Well, I'm, I'm not saying I prefer Vegas to Philadelphia. There's nowhere I'd rather be than, than Philadelphia as I'm staring out this, at the skyline here. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I like Vegas much more than you. You were very sour on that Vegas trip in 2021. Yeah, it's fake. Oh, come on. Come on. It is. Uh, and it's like you can gamble anywhere now. Well, well, yeah, that part's true. But well, there's, there's DraftKings Sportsbook. <laughs> there's a certain energy that comes in the room when you get, when when you walk through. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's where I was in the Flacco trade okay. went down. Uh, Jameis Winston. That would be a trade, trade candidate for? for them. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Your boy Matt Ryan, who you know famously See, that's that's went the one I would head do. to head with you in high school baseball. <laughs> famously, uh, yeah, <laughs> Matt Ryan. Um, that's that's an interesting one. That's 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 a, a route I I could potentially see the Jets going. Uh, they got to do something. They can't. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think who you know who Hackett has has a history with. Uh, that would be really funny. What if they traded for Russell Wilson? Sean Payton doesn't <laughs> want him. You don't think so? No. Sean Payton went day one goes out and signs uh what's his face, uh, Jared Stidham. Yeah. 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 I don't know. That's yeah. kind of funny. No, nah, they're they're pot committed. To you think Russell Hackett's had there. enough of, of, of <laughs> yeah, Uncle yeah, Russ? Yeah, probably so. Okay. Probably so. He, also, your boy. Um, uh, now, one thing we've got going on at uh, at PHLY that we didn't necessarily always have uh, in our last place. There's there's this robust merch. Mm. So, uh, Ali, if you want to pull up the the merch options for the the viewers, I mean, check out check out the stuff we've got, Zach. Look at that. Fantastic, and just the beginning. Just, yeah, yeah, just the beginning there. Those you know, are maybe impressive. We'll get, a, we'll get a Stone Cold Newsman. We'll get a Creative Eater. <laughs> we'll get, uh, you know, the Ligon's Year. Look at that. <laughs> the Ligon's Year. Look at those hoodies, those PHLY shirts. Yeah, great Every stuff. team represented there. That's impressive. You can check that out on, at, at the PHLY locker. There you go. Uh, all right, Zach, we've got, we've got one segment left here, and uh, this is a new segment. This is called Trade Squawks. And because this is a, a new home for us, we're going to have a little, a little trade conversation between the two of us about uh, maybe some things that I'm willing to give, you're willing to give. Okay. You know, I know that you are held hostage here for <laughs> five days a week all year long. Now, yes. just to, to, to be specific here uh, for you guys, that, that includes game day. So during the season, it'll be five days a week, including game day, pre- and post-game shows. Um, check out the, the podcast feed. is hopefully going to be up. Uh, on Apple and everywhere else by the end of the day. I know people are asking about that. Um, but, you know, we're in the same place every day. Are you going to be willing to do like 3 a.m. podcasts with me? Let's mm. sort of, let's hash this out live on air. Okay. Do you want to go first? Uh, you want me to go first? You go first because I, I might adjust my market based on, mm. on, on what you're selling. All right, Zach. I will promise... Between the two of us, I mm. will promise to interrupt you less, to do my best mm. to interrupt you less if you valet my car every day. <laughs> uh, if I valet your car every day. You know what? I'm used to the, I'm used to the uh, interruptions. It's part of the charm. So, no, I don't want to valet, part. I don't want to valet your car every day. I mean, although, I know, but you're a famously although, good valet yeah, parker. I want to see those used wheels to get in good action. tips there. So, so the, the, the joke there is back in high school, I was, I was valet parking and, uh, I, I admit one thing, you know, it's, it's like the hustle that you see, you know, you, you run down the first baseline when someone gives you their ticket, I used to just sprint to get the car. They see how committed you are to getting the it's one car. one of the funniest visuals in, in, my, in my life to imagine. <laughs> you come back, you bring them their car. They say, man, this, this guy really hustled to get me my car. But are you and sprinting within the sight of them? Yeah, then you, know, you, 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 you kind of slow down once you get out of sight there. But you take that We ticket. saw this once in action. I think it was in Indianapolis where the guy took the keys and then and just took sprinted. off on a dead sprint. Exactly. It makes me think he was just stealing my car. <laughs> I remember that dinner. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you give a bigger tip to someone who takes your ticket and sprints? No, I would be a little bit worried. <laughs> I mean, I give them the why? Same you're tip. waiting. The you're, same, you're, you're waiting at that point. I don't think it would affect my tip. I yeah. think it would be. That was a fun job. That was a fun job. Was it? It was. Have you ever had a not fun job? I feel like you just yeah. take the fun in whatever job you have. Well, you try to find the good in everything, but no. What I, was your least fun job? 
my least fun. So, well, I was what we called, a, a, I'm not going to say the grocery store's name here because we're always welcome to the sponsors. Um, okay. But a local grocery store, when I was in high school, I was, uh, we call it a customer service attendant. I was the guy who brought the carts outside, inside. Okay. Okay. Um, which was fine, you know, and I did it in the rain, snow, it didn't matter. Sweet, but yeah. a part of that job too was was you know you had to clean the bathrooms, right? And, oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. That 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 was probably even you would admit that that wasn't fun. That's no, fun. no that 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 was probably my my least favorite. Um, okay. You know, you know, job that I did. Yeah. Uh, for me, I would say, and I don't think that we're going to be worried about uh, Fortune Off becoming a, a sponsor here. So I would say uh, in college, when I was working at, uh, it was like, came home from abroad, had an extra couple months. Did a, I did a seasonal job at Fortune Off. Tough because like they wouldn't let you bring your phone to the floor. So I was just very bored. I found myself just like, I feel like writing you can entertain yourself pretty paper, easily, though. like yeah. baseball lineups or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Pass the time. Uh, so you, you reject my offer, no counter? I'm happy um, to just continue interrupting you. That's fine. Yeah, I'm, look, it's, it's been four years of that. I'm used to it. Okay. Uh, so I imagine a, a lot of these, my answer will probably be, you know, I, 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 you know, I love you for it, right? It's, it's, it's part of what okay. makes you special. So, All right. Um, what uh, are you? Here you go. Um, I promise to sell your jokes as unfunny as some of them might be, as cringeworthy as some of them might be, if you promise to explain the rules of the games <laughs> that you propose to me, because, uh, you know, we're going to have a bigger audience here. We're doing this daily. We're going to introduce a lot of these games into these segments. And sometimes you have this expectation that I know exactly what the rules are to these games. That's fair. Um, I like the way that you're reading those as if they're like wedding vows, <laughs> um, which I think is fair. Yeah. That's, that's a little bit what this is. Um, I don't want you to sell my jokes. I want, if, if they're, Landing dead, I want them to land dead. Okay. Um, but I will take the note and, uh, and do my best to explain the rules. Perfect. Okay. Because the audience will appreciate it as well. Um, I will ask you to do no more than one 2 a.m. podcast the rest of the year if you give me, the sickos, and all the listeners a few more details about your honeymoon. <laughs> um, see, I don't like this deal because first off, <laughs> I came here, I came here um, with the belief that we weren't doing those 2 a.m. pods anymore, right? <laughs> so, so you can't change the world, the, the terms of employment on me right now. I mean, I didn't say I'm going to chain you to yeah, a mic, but um, I said ask. Yeah. Uh, the honeymoon was amazing because I spent it with my wife. That's, that, that was, okay, that's, that's flex, what made it worthwhile. Yeah. No, lo no specific location. I don't know why we need to get into that. No. no. Yeah. It's so weird. <laughs> he won't admit. He, won't, he doesn't want to say where he went on his honeymoon. <laughs> um, uh, was it Denver? <laughs> no, Denver would be great. Yeah, uh, Denver would be great. No, it's Hong Kong. We went to Hong Kong. Wow. Yeah, so there you go. Um, Breaking news. Yeah. <laughs> um, Finally. Here you go. I promise. Now, you see, I had some football ones. I, I, I didn't know we were all doing I have personal a football here. One. Okay. I promise not to defend Jonathan Gannon unnecessarily mm. if you promise <laughs> to embrace positionless players. No. <laughs> Absolutely okay. not. Do First I need of all, to tell I you, want you to make a I fool of yourself <laughs> defending Jonathan Gannon do, when he doesn't deserve defending. Do I need to tell you about how Eric Spolstra took LeBron James and Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade. You about that because it's and, a different sport. And said, you know what? We're just going to take away the position designations, okay? So what if we stopped viewing players? This is like your Malcolm Gladwellization of sports. Like, just because something works for one specific thing doesn't mean yeah. it applies to something else. Bo, you're basically saying, okay, just because a position was created in 1950, that's the only position. Show that, me an uh, example of one of those guys who has been used correctly in that way. It's like, okay, draft Isaiah Simmons. Oh. You can do whatever you want with him. And then it comes to the regular season and the defensive coordinator wants to make him play a specific position. Did, it's not how it works. Did it's you never not how see Jabril works. Peppers? On Sunday. Yeah, on his like second team, okay. finally playing a specific position. He is a safety. <laughs> okay. Um, but uh, all right, so so you are not taking I mean, like deal. your boy LaVisca Chanel taking the taking the league on fire. 
I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm a big LaVisca Chanel guy. Let our, yeah. let our big Denver condition What a college know player. That. Yeah, position. Yeah, you see, all it takes is the right coach. By the way, have you ever heard of Debo Samuel? Out of curiosity, have you I, ever heard of Debo? I have. You're going to say you invented Debo Samuel at the senior bowl. I did. Yes, okay. <laughs> and what a donk. Uh, as we see in the chat here, Liam Ward says, I think it was Liam Ward, said Hassan Reddick, positionless play. Look at that. Hassan Reddick's an example, okay? But it's a perfect example because Hassan Reddick was drafted as a positionless player, for, forced to play linebacker, which was a bad position for him. Mm. And finally, when you put him in the thing that he does well to rush the passer, he's successful. Like M Micah Parsons, boom. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Micah Parsons is good. Okay. But that's because he's like the best defensive player in the league. Mm -hmm. There's not a bad position for mm -hmm. him. But okay. Uh, all right. My last one for you, Zach. If you write a Derek Barnett story mm. for uh, allphly.com, I will take down my Hall & Oates Twitter background of us. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I'd be happy to write a Derek Barnett story. I, I always enjoy speaking to Derek. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I actually would really like that Hall & Oates background to be taken down. So I would... I know. I, think, I, I figured this one would be good for you. Uh, yeah. So I, I would gladly... I would Great. So gladly. I will keep it up until you write the Derek Barnett story. Uh, okay. I don't really like that. Um, Let's see. I, I, I don't have a third written down here, so I'm going to do an impromptu, okay? Because okay. it's in my notebook, actually. It's, it's, okay. it's not typed here. Um, if, great, if, imp the great improviser that you okay, are. Yes. If you commit... To, yeah, look, I, I know you would not... Uh, I'm not doing any unfair deals here, right? Yeah. This is not like, uh, you know, how... Um, or Chris Boward saying, like, give me Jalen Waddle right. or Jonathan Taylor. But if you commit to, to maybe making me, like... 25% less uncomfortable on the show. Okay. Okay. Like, like bringing up um, stuff that... Hong uh, Kong? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Then, I'm intrigued. Okay. Then um, I will commit to... Uh, let's see here. What would be a good one? I mean, you're just asking. You're not oh, offering yeah. anything. No, 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 no. Then, then I was, I was gonna do one of your like eclectic food um, things here. Uh, you know, we a few weeks ago we we went to what the Southeast Asian Food Festival, Southeast food Asian market, Food yeah. Festival. But I enjoyed that, and and, and so I'm I'm good yeah, with. Yeah, that doesn't. That's with, not getting me anything with, for with for me to yeah. expand your okay. horizons. Oh, okay. Okay. So then I will. Um, here, here, give me something here. Give me something that I can concede to you. No, you're the one calling me on the phone. You okay. think about it. You call me when you have a serious offer. Uh, all right, here you go. If you commit to making me 25% less uncomfortable here, then I will commit to 25% less football talk. Less like hardcore, like, you know, let's get let's, But I'm let's get still in control that. of that anyway. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Okay, yeah, that, that, that's usually how this also, works Also, you out. just wrote a story about being comfortable in uncomfortable situations. Now mm. you're trying to be less comfortable? Mm -hmm. You need Jeff Stalin to come yell at your face. That is true. I'll take okay. that. If I, I you, you, you sleep on this. You think of a new <laughs> offer you can bring me back tomorrow. Because the good news is this conversation can keep going five days a week all year long. Hmm. Uh, all right, Zach, what, uh, you, you talked about they've got a, yeah. a walkthrough today. What's the next couple of days look like? Obviously, the game on Thursday night. Yeah, so uh, the Eagles will be on the pra or on the practice field for a walkthrough at at, at two fifteen. We will hear from Sean Desai and Brian Johnson at one fifteen. I I I'll be over there at the team facility. Uh, Brian Johnson, I'm curious to what what would you like to hear from Brian Johnson today? That's going to be interesting because he's kind of under the microscope after that performance. Yeah, the other I mean, day. I thought the 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 offense was a little bit static. Hmm. Um, you know they didn't they didn't change personnel groupings that often, and that I do remember that happening at the beginning of last year as well. Uh, you know they stayed in eleven personnel for most of this game, and it was mostly Quez Watkins. Uh, I think Alameda Zacchaeus played like seven snaps. We didn't see a lot of twelve, a lot of thirteen. I thought that they would lean into twelve a little bit more because they were so successful at it last year. And even when they were in eleven, it was a lot of like two by two sets. Um, so I, I don't think that Brian Johnson is going to answer this necessarily, but I'm curious to see if that changes against the Vikings. I don't know. Like, I, I need to see a little bit more creativity, I think, in, in, uh, in that game. I'm also looking forward to finally getting to watch the All-22 and seeing how much of you know, the passing game was Jalen Hurts missing guys who were open and not pulling the trigger and how much was just a good job by the Patriots' defense. Good insight there. Look at that. You do know your stuff. 
Um, That's why I'm here. <laughs> we will hear uh, from Plus Brian the, Johnson. The legs that at, you have to see now. At, 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 at 115, Jalen Hurts speaks at 145. Uh, we'll hear from Nick Sirianni the next time tomorrow at some point. And then uh, the game Thursday night against the Minnesota Vikings. So it'll be, uh, it'll, be, it'll be fascinating to watch. We didn't really talk about those other injuries that were on the injury report. Let's, mm. let's talk about those quickly. Real quick, yeah. Is and, your expectation that, you know, Blankenship – and Gainwell specifically, who are not who played the whole game, that they're in danger of not playing Thursday night. Uh, I'll find out more today. Um, it's a little early for that. Boy, would that be tough? Like, yeah. especially Blankenship. Exactly. Uh, I think Fletcher Cox is is going to be okay. Um, as as, as we said, Nakobe's out, and and we're not expecting Bradbury to be back. So Blankenship and Gainwell will be the two big ones to watch. Um, I am curious if Rashad Penny's active this 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 week. You could potentially see that. Uh, but if blanket ships down, man, I mean, you're looking at brutal. Yeah, I mean Evans and Edmonds to get. I, mm. I feel like if blanket ships out, you might as well just put Sidney Brown out there because Edmonds and Evans are both limited athletically. You need some speed there. You might as well rip the bandaid off. Yes, but I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. All right, how do you think this went? Enjoyed it. I, you know, this is uh, this is this is fun. This is fun. It's always good talking to you. As I said, it's 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 a little different doing it in this setting, but this is this is awesome. This is this is this is why we're here. This is gonna be fun. All right. Well, we are uh, we are very very excited to be here to get started. We are happy to see the uh, the sickos here. We're happy to see some new people. Stay tuned for all the rest of the content that we've got uh, coming up later today. We will be back tomorrow at what are we twelve thirty tomorrow? I believe so. I believe that's right. Uh, so we'll be back then. Check your podcast feed so uh, once everything switches over, you can, you can get all of our stuff. But that's going to do it for the very first episode of the PHLY Eagles podcast for Zach and Allie and everybody else in the back. I'm Bo. We thank you for listening. We will talk to you later. I think we can say, as always, we love you. Like the mayor.